Hi everyone. I just wanted to give a quick demo of how to use the program logic event generator. Um, I believe it's called Plague. If that's wrong, someone can correct me. But I'm a pretty visual learner and I struggled a little bit with this program when I first started with it. Um, definitely by no means an expert now, but hopefully I can show some of you newcomers out there uh, just a quick basic setup uh, and then you can go on and um, develop your own conditions. Um, way beyond what I'm going to show here. So the first thing I, you'll need to do is you'll need to install the apps. So to do that, you go to the apps, and then you'll choose Install Apps, and then in the search, just type in Program Logic. Um, it's not going to show up for me because I already have them installed, but you'll need to install um, both the Program Logic Event Generator as well as the Program Logic Core. Uh, once you do that, uh, you'll be up and running. Now I will mention that, has, that this um, app has a license. Uh, it's a really cheap um, cost compared to the functionality you're getting with it. So um, I had no problems at all um, purchasing one myself. Um, I doubt you will either once you see the power it can uh, give you to automate. Um, but if, uh, if you're not sure, you have 30 days to try it. So give it a shot, um, but I think it's well worth it. Okay, um, before I get into the demo, I just want to describe a couple of the things that um, I do with this. So just to give you some examples, we're not going to cover them today, but what you can do. Um, so I, for example, uh, have my kitchen cabinet lights turn off after 10 minutes when there's no motion detected. So I have a motion sensor, uh, and as long as there's motion, it'll re-trigger the timer. Um, whenever it detects motion, so I can you know, be in my kitchen for two hours if I want, and as soon as I leave, after 10 minutes, it'll turn off. Uh, another one I have is I program my blinds so they don't go down uh, at sunset, or I guess I should say they normally go down at sunset unless I have a window open, then they'll stay open. Uh, I also have programmed some thermostat functionality where if I have a door open, a window open, it'll set my heat or AC to a, a different level so it'll in essence turn it off um, and I have that set for a door window open after two minutes so those are just some examples you'll find your own uh, once you get more familiar with it and just see how powerful it is so now um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how it works uh, for any of these conditions to function to actually perform actions on your conditions, I guess I should say, you'll need to have your um, plague device armed. Uh, so this this is my demo one here for today, uh, and I have it armed. I also have some test switches here that I'm going to use. So what I'm going to do is click on the little wrench icon here, and the first thing I need to do is select some inputs. So I have uh, triggers, schedules, and device properties. So these are the things that I'm going to use to uh, construct my conditions. And then when a condition is satisfied, when a condition is true, I can select an action uh, for that condition. So let me uh, give a brief example here. So a trigger uh, is the first one I'm going to do. I'll select my device here. So I'm just going to choose test switch one. Uh, and I'm going to select the event type. So I'm going to say a device is turned on or off. It's my only option for a switch. And I'm going to give it, and I'm going to give it a name. So I'll just call it T switch one. And I'm going to say under which mode the device is turned on. Now in your condition, you can easily check to see if a device is turned off by just adding an exclamation point in front of the trigger name. So you don't have to be too uh, worried about which, if you want to check if it's on or off, because you can reverse that in your condition. Um, okay, so I'm going to accept that. So now I have my uh, T-switch 1, and I'm just going to create another one for my switch 2. So I'm going to say my event type is the device turned off or on. I'll name it switch 2, T-switch 2 and say a device is turned on. I'm going to accept that. <coughs> uh, another thing you can do is put in a schedule. 
So maybe I want to uh, create a schedule for when for between sunset and sunrise. Maybe call it night. So I just leave my uh, well. You can leave it or not. I leave the S there. So S night. So I know it's a schedule. I'm going to choose my start time or start type as day of week. So each of these days that you want it to be um, considered, you can check. So I'm going to use all the days because I want to know if it's night any day of the week. And uh, instead of a certain time of day here, I'm just going to choose at sunset. So my time is at sunset. Uh, if you want to do a random delay, maybe for a light turning off or, or on, you could do that. Uh, I'm not. And then I'm just going to choose my next stop type. Or sorry, my stop type is day of week. Select all my days. And I'm going to choose at sunrise. So that's going to make this schedule true between sunset and sunrise. So I'll just hit accept there. Now my schedule is created. Device properties, I can choose things like levels. So I have a light level sensor. Uh, on my outside front porch. So I can choose that light sensor and I can choose current level here. Uh, last update if you want it, but I want current level. And then uh, it tells me my current value. Now it gives me a default name of P1. Um, I'm not actually going to use that in this example, um, but you would probably want to change that just so it's a little bit more intuitive. Uh, you could do that just by going edit and then giving it a new name, accept. Okay, so now I've got some inputs here, but I need to use them in a condition to have, have them mean anything. So click on my conditions, and I'll choose Add Row. So I'm just going to give my uh, condition a name here. I like to leave the um, letters at the beginning because it helps me know what it is, whether it's a trigger, condition, schedule, or property. Um, so I'm just going to name this Switch On. So what I can do here is just type in um, some conditions. So I'm going to go back to my input, check what I need my trigger here. So it's T switch 1, and I also have T switch 2. So I'm going to do a condition where if T switch 1 or T switch 2 is true, um, this condition will become true. So all I need to do is put this in there, T switch 1 or T switch to. So that means when, because I specified as this is on, when this switch is turned on, this will then be true. Same for this one. Hopefully that makes sense. So when T switch 1 is turned on, that means this trigger will be true. So all I need to do is type that in here. So T switch 1 or T switch 2, that means either one of those switches was turned on. And if either of those switches are turned on, because I have it joined with an or, this condition will become true. Once this condition is true, I can set up an action for it. So I'm going to go to my Actions tab, and you'll notice my condition is already in here, so I can just go Edit. If for some reason it's not in there, you could find it under Make a Selection. But anyway, I'm going to add some actions here. So I choose Edit, and what I'm going to do is turn on T-Switch 3. So I can just set it to On right through this interface. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a delay. So I choose Manage Delays, and I'm going to set up a 10 second delay. So there it is there. I'm going to choose Close, and then now I'm in my 10 second delay, so I'm just going to turn T switch 3, or Test Switch 3 off. Now I choose Finish, finished. And that's all I'm going to do for now. So I've got my inputs, my condition, checking if test or T switch 1 or T switch 2 is true. And then that's going to set this condition to true, which will in turn turn on my switch and then after delay of 10 seconds turn it to off. So what I need to do now is I'm just going to close this and make sure I choose save. And then I'm going to choose continue. So I just need to give my unit a minute to restart here. 
see the progress bar up here. Another thing about this progress bar, if you made any mistakes in your uh, conditions, it will tell you up here, which is really nice. Okay, so my plug is armed. Now I'm going to turn on test switch 1 or test switch 2. And there we go, test switch 3 turned on. So in 10 seconds uh, after that delay, it should turn off. And there we go. So it's that easy. Obviously this is a really basic example. Um, you can take it way further than this, do uh, many more useful things, um, which I'm sure you all will do. But I just want to give you a quick overview um, of how to use Plex. So you need inputs, and then um, when you have your inputs, you'll need to use those in a condition. Now, I mentioned before, if you want to check if a switch is off, all you need to do is add an exclamation point. There's a lot of different operators. Uh, in here there's you know like less than so I think I had a P1 was my light sensor so I could do uh, or P1 is less than 20 so when my light sensor goes below 20 that would then become true uh, I can also base um, I can create other conditions off of or from this condition so I can do um, add a row here and I can call this I don't know test. So I could say C switch on. Um, so when this is true or um, P1 is greater than 40. Not a great example but I, I'm sure you get the idea here. You can you can use conditions in other conditions. The, the trick to this though is you have to make sure that if you're using a condition like this one here it it needs to be above in the, the order of this, the condition you're using it in. Like I said, this is just a getting started introduction, show you how it works. Um, the, the forum member Rex Beckett has created an awesome introduction, um, or I guess whole manual, if you will, of this um, a plague. So check out his Plague Basics PDF, um, download that. It's incredibly useful. Um, and you can also check out Richard's website um, you know, to see, see more information there as well. Uh, just read about Plague and his other plugins that he's created for Vera. So hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, post them on the forum. Um, or you can post them in the comments here. Um, and I'll do my best to answer, but like I said, not an expert. The forum, if you need advanced help, that's probably the best place to go. Thanks, everyone.